Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Monday, July 3rd, 2017. I want to talk today about the question of why it is that Moore's Law does not apply to battery technology. So Moore's Law is this notion that every two years or so, the number of transistors in a chip is going to double. And this law has held true for decades and looks like it's going to continue to hold true for quite some time to come. In practical terms, that means that the capacity or the price performance ratio of your computer roughly doubles every two years. That's why a computer you buy today has about twice as much power as a comparably priced computer two years ago, and why we can have pocket computers more powerful than the highest end desktop computers only 15 years ago. So why doesn't that work for batteries? Why is it that <laughs> the battery in my phone is not orders of magnitude more energy dense than the batteries we were able to produce 10 years ago. Because if Moore's law had held true for batteries, then relative to the batteries you could buy 16 years ago would be eight doublings, right? That's 256 times more powerful. So the battery that keeps your phone alive for a day would now hold about a year's worth of electricity. You wouldn't have to charge your phone but every once a year. Two years after that, you'd probably want to trade in your phone for a new one before you'd ever need to charge it. So it'd be really cool if Moore's Law did apply to batteries and they were doubling in capacity every two years. Uh, but it's not even remotely close to that. And so why? And the answer is something about the fundamental limits of each technology. There's this great talk by Richard Feynman decades ago called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom, where he talks about the fact that there's so much we can do to arrange matter at the atomic scale. We've, At the time he gave the speech in, I believe, the 50s, uh, there was just incredible potential for arranging matter. And we've realized some of that over the ensuing decades. Uh, there's so much potential for putting more transistors or more anything, uh, as long as you can still make it out of atoms. Ideally, in the perfect world, a transistor or a wire would be one atom wide. And that means that we're talking about 0.1 nanometer architectures and although it seems unlikely that that would work, that, that is the absolute limit to the size of a transistor. You can't have a transistor that's smaller than one atom. What's the absolute limit for batteries? Well, there it's the number of atoms and the energy per atom, right? So if you can store so many units of energy per lithium atom, and you can fit so many lithium atoms into an anode, then that is the fundamental limit. That's why pure lithium metal batteries are so potentially powerful because you're fitting as many lithium atoms as you possibly can into that structure because it's pure lithium. So how much energy can you fit per lithium atom? And the answer is about three volts worth of energy. So the cell voltage tells you how much energy there is per atom. And for lithium, it's three volts, which is among the highest of any known chemistry. If you make pure lithium, and lithium gives you the most possible voltage per atom of any of the elements, that's as much energy as you can pack into a battery. You can use chemistry to upgrade the energy, upgrade the voltage. So if you destabilize the lithium, if you put it in an environment it hates, that's like packing a spring more tightly. It's going to have more energy when it comes out. It's going to give you higher voltage. But whatever chemistry you do to the lithium to upgrade its voltage, that chemistry takes up room. It means you're not using pure lithium anymore, so you get fewer atoms of lithium. So there's a give and take on that. We're not far from those limits. We're making incremental improvements as we approach those limits, not doubling every two years because we're far away from those limits and there's plenty of room to grow. If you like that kind of discussion, the issue of technological development and chemistry, Tune in next time. We update Monday through Friday. We talk about chemistry and batteries and the questions of technological improvement here in the Allen Lab.